All right, so today you have three assignments, it's gonna seem like a lot. Uh, each one's kind of short. So day four, notes and word equations. Just open up this document, click on that, and follow the instructions. So I've learned to streamline this a little bit, so you have just one link. So word equations is one link, writing chemical equations is another link. After you do the reading, the optional video, which I do recommend, they're both short in each reading, uh, answer the three questions here. Right, so that's number one. Uh, number two, the assignment is practice. Yesterday we did the ionic nomenclature. Today we're doing covalent. So you can click on that and uh, work right here. So here's your questions and problems. And then lastly, is the exit ticket? It's only 10, uh, 10 questions. And I'll give you till Friday night to do that, so long as one of these two, namely this assignment right here, is done by Thursday night for attendance. I'll give you till Friday night for the exit ticket. Okay, so real quick, let's go through this. The rules are quite straightforward. It's right here. You just have to you know, continue to refer back to them. So one difference between ionic and covalent is that we have these prefixes. You will not see these in ionic compounds. You will need your periodic table, and you know that ionic compounds involve a metal from one of the first three groups and one nonmetal from one of the last, well, groups five, six, and seven, namely. Because group four primarily gets involved in covalent bonds, they do not form any ionic bonds, and these halogens or the noble gases, well, they don't respond or react at all because they're stable. So when we're talking about ionic bonds, we're looking at groups uh, five, six, seven, and one, two, and three. So you're gonna have, again, a metal with the nonmetal. That was yesterday. Today, you'll be looking at the same side of the periodic table, It'll always be two nonmetals from over here. And the rules are different just as the notes indicated. So you'll want this for quick reference possibly, but you come over here and so you'll go through the prefixes, in time, you might uh, memorize these as you do the problems, but let's do one example. First element keeps its name. That's no different than the ionic one. Okay, so let's say we're looking at this example, P4S3. The first element would be P, phosphorus. All right, you might not know that right off, but after you search for a while, you would find phosphorus right here. Okay, and the second thing, is sulfur. Again, you go back to your periodic table, you find sulfur. How many phosphorus are there? From the molecular formula reading, you know there's four. That four represents how many P's there are phosphorus. So that's going to be a tetraphosphorus. And three, come up here, three says tri. And if that's sulfur, it's going to be trisulfur. But wait, if, uh, I mean, this, the first element gets a prefix only if it has a subscript. Uh, the second element gets the ide, I-D-E, ending, just like we did with the ionic compounds. So the second one always gets a prefix. So even if it is just one, you must put mono. So the correct name for P4S3 is tetraphosphorus trisulfide and you would be following all these rules right here. You'll get the hang of it. The more you do, I'll do one with you. Um, let's do this one. I'll click in here and this is what you'll do. Might be good to come up here and change your color. You get to pick any color you like. I'll pick fluorescent green for the example. So, whoops, that's highlighted. I picked the wrong thing. There we go. So Cl207, so I search on my periodic table and I find chlorine and O is oxygen. The rules say the first element keeps its name and gets a prefix only if there's a subscript. Well, I do see a subscript too. So this is going to be di, oh, that doesn't work. Green on green, I didn't mix this up. None, sorry. Di, because that's two and then chlorine, dichlorine, and seven would be hepta, hepta, and oxygen, except that I'm supposed to put ide at the end. And there we go, dichlorine heptaoxide. 
doesn't always sound the best or greatest, but it doesn't matter. Most of these names are never pronounced. They're written on bottles on the side of ingredients labels that nobody ever looks at or medications or just lab chemicals. But nonetheless, dichlorine heptoxide. That's the name of this one. And then you'd go the same thing with these. Let me do one example here. Here we have carbon dioxide, right? So carbon, you know the chemical symbol by now, most likely, be a C. If you don't, you can look that up on the periodic table. And I see dioxide, I tells me it is the last one. It's oxygen and there's two of them. So it's gonna be an oxygen with the two. And that would be your carbon dioxide. Okay, so I've done one example for each of these. And I know it should look like this right here at the subscript. Let me show you how to do this. Now in the Google Forms, I'll be a little more uh, flexible because you will not be able to do that. But here, take your cursor and highlight that too. Move up to here under Format. And under Format, you can go to the text, just keep dragging the mouse and on your phone, I'm not sure how easy this is or not. And then right down here, you go to subscript X2. And look at that, made it a subscript. That's the correct way to write it. Uh, I will accept uh, CO2 uh, in the big fashion. That is fine uh, if you do not want to format it. But if you do want it to look good, or at least in the correct manner, you do that with each of your subscripts. Again, I will not hold you to that. You can just write CO2 and that would be fine. Okay, I'm gonna take these off for sake of the bonus video and email me if you have any questions.